name is Ron Lawrence and I'm your police chief here in Costa Mesa. I'm proud to be so. And uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, animal control in the city of Costa Mesa actually falls under the jurisdiction of the police department. So that's why uh, we're here hosting this. And I, I want to start by introducing our mayor. John Stevens is here. He joined us. Welcome, mayor. And Councilmember Lor Council Lauren Gameros is here. Thank you for joining us. And thank all of you for joining us. Uh, I want to uh, start by introducing Captain Vic Bacala. He is in charge of operations, so he oversees animal control. And I want to thank him for all the hard, diligent work that he does here in Costa Mesa. We are absolutely animal lovers. I've got two golden retrievers myself. And so the care and uh, uh, concern for our pets and our communities is really foremost to us as well. And I live here too. So I'm a Costa Mesa resident and it's uh, important for me, just as it is, is to you, that we maintain a safe community, not only for our families, but for our pets as well. So Captain Bacala has done an outstanding job with our animal services uh, unit and also uh, maintaining a very positive relationship with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, who I also want to thank their positive relationship with us, an ongoing relationship. And I'll let Captain Bacala introduce them and uh, get us started here. Thanks, Chief. Um, first, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Quinn. She's talking. Oh, there she is. All right. Uh, Dr. Quinn, she's a California expert on uh, coyotes and rats. I live next door to Costa Mesa. And she lives in Huntington Beach, but she plays in Costa Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Janet Munson is our lead volunteer for the, uh, Costa Mesa and coyotes, as well as uh, Chip Openlander is with her. And then we have Dave Dodge, who's on his way out just from helping us. Um, I was asked by the chief of police to do an update at the request of the, of the mayor um, by someone having coyote concerns. We usually have our coyote awareness month is April. It was adopted in March of 2019, our coyote management plan, and then our annual updates every April. We're doing a mid-year update. Um, we've missed our meetings this year. So I'm gonna, go, uh, the, I'm gonna go through some slides and then we're just gonna go right into questions because that's I think what most people want answered, not hearing a bunch of us talk. Go ahead, slide please. Here's our coyote management plan. Like I said, March 2019, it was adopted. And here is our strategies. And we wrote this plan in, uh, with the assistance of Dr. Quinn and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And this plan is very similar, if not exactly, to Newport Beaches and Seal Beaches and Fountain Valleys. So we're all very, and Huntington. We're all very similar. We have a regional approach. Uh, we reach out to mainly Newport Beach um, on a quarterly basis to ask them about their coyotes. We also are, they have the ability to go into this coyote cacher and we're able to look into the uh, area codes around us, the zip codes around us and look at their coyote activity as well to see if ours is unusual. Slide. Here's our coyote uh, activity in Costa Mesa. I took it from, it's from January to November uh, 2020 versus this year. And last year we had a pretty good reporting last year. I think it's because everybody was stuck at home. So they were definitely vigilant. People were going on a lot of walks and seeing more coyotes, a little more coyote activity. And then this year we've had a, so far this year, we've had a 54% reduction in coyote activity and reporting. Slide. Okay, here's our coyote activity this year. And if you pay attention, the, the green, obviously there's a legend. But if you see, they're pretty much spread out in those areas where there's wilderness areas. Fairview Park, you have golf courses in the north, and then you have the Back Bay in the south. And slide, compared to 2020, and there's a lot more activity in 2020. Yeah, we have Talbert, Fairview, et cetera. And if you go up uh, just, just where the triangle is up there, just to the south that, there, there was a lot of construction going on in the freeway. So they were coming along the outside of the freeway in and out of the neighborhoods, the coyotes. We were tracking them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be done and then we're going to go right into questions. Slide. Um, the city of Costa Mesa has a balanced management plan. If a coyote is habituated, that means it no longer fears human beings or if it has a, uh, killed a, a pet that in the presence of a human being that, that under the control such as a leashed dog, then we're going to go out and we're gonna trap that animal and then we're gonna euthanize that animal. And there are the areas we've, as you can see, Fairview Park into a neighborhood. And then a lot of them were around the fairgrounds because the fairgrounds wasn't being used. 
the coyotes were zipping in and out of the fairgrounds all over the place. It became a natural habitat for them. And if you look, that's where the concentration of our euthanized coyotes came from. Anna, they were all trapped by Anna Rodriguez, or hit with a dart. That's Anna Rodriguez for animal control, senior animal control officer. And we ended up, uh, we ended up trapping the animals and then uh, euthanizing them, or we shot them with a dart if they were so inclined. Some of them were injured, but the majority of them were habituated, and the majority of that was due to people feeding them. That's a huge problem in the city of Costa Mesa. There are people out there feeding coyotes. And then a coyote gets to know people feed me, and then they come up to other people and wonder, why aren't you feeding me? So that's, that's what we have. Slide. Oh, what? You can't hear me? Okay, I'll take my mask off. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. <laughs> okay, and then here we, we have Coyote Awareness Month uh, is, is April. And then we have two meetings. We had two meetings, but hit one more time. Sad. Canceled due to COVID. And then slide again. But here, here's our good news. We have two meetings scheduled. Dr. Quinn's going to come back. And then in that meeting, she'll discuss the biology of the coyote. And then uh, Janice will come and help us also on how we're going to control coyotes or manage them. It's really a management thing. It's both humans and them. We have to get them used to doing things and being afraid of human beings. And I am going to open it up to questions. Slide. That's it. That should be it. Can you go back to the uh, uh, slide that showed all the uh, coyote sightings? Sure. And then point out where Vista Park is. I live there. Vista Park, okay. So there's Victor. There's Vic go back one. Go back again, sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go forward, sorry. See, okay, see Victoria right there? See at the end? Right there. Now oh, pay yeah, attention. Now pay know. attention. Go ahead, click. Go ahead. Go back. Back up? Yep. Let's so see. Yeah. There you go. Yep. 20 and this is 21. Yeah. So that's it. Right there. So a lot in 20, not so many sightings in 21. But the most, if you go back to 20, if you go back to 20, please. Okay, if you look at it, most of those sightings are all just sightings. But that's where coyotes live. They live in that Fairview, Talbert, Santa Ana River bed. That's where they all live. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine there'd be a bunch in this area. As, and also on this side, because they're coming up from the Back Bay area also. When we find them, like we found them, oddly enough, we found this group of actually, unfortunately, cats being killed at like Orange and 20th. And we thought, what a weird place. <laughs> but then we found out somebody was feeding coyotes, feral cats, excuse me. They are feeding feral cats, which was bringing the coyotes in because there was a few food supply there right in the middle of our city. And I think we've controlled her because those, we've spoken to her and threatened people with different things. Feeding wildlife is a, against the law. And, uh, and now that area is kind of clear in the middle. So that's pretty good. So, yeah. so what's the best way to, to report a coyote sighting? God, that's like a perfect question. The best way to do it is either go to the city website under, the, in, under coyote, and then it'll take you to the coyote cacher. It's an app that uh, Dr. Quinn developed, and it'll give you a laundry list of questions, and that app goes to Dr. Quinn's research teams, and it also goes to the city of Costa Mesa because we look at it every month to track our coyote activity. And anything that you request to be contacted on, you'll be contacted on. It has a, would you like to be contacted? Yes, and we'll get you right back. And the Coyote Catcher gives you a, a myriad of information on how to deal with coyotes and how to report them. And then if you go to our city website, it has our management plan that has backyard checks, um, et cetera, on how to haze coyotes. So other than humans, who are their, who are their predators or their enemies? Well, they're, they're the apex predator here, other than the only thing they're afraid of is humans. We have people, we've had someone out in Fairview Park, I'm gonna say, not very intelligently, let their dogs play with coyotes. And the coyote, it was a good, I think it was a golden retriever, and it followed it in back, and then two other coyotes attacked it. So they're looking, we're not sure if they're attacking him because they're attacking him, or if they just wanna get him out of the way so they can eat other things. So they are, they're going after small dogs, 20 pounds and under generally, cats for sure, and everything in between fruit trees, et cetera. It's all in the coyote management plan. It'll tell you if you have a backyard checklist, it'll write down the checklist, it'll tell you exactly how to make your yard not so coyote friendly. Hope that answered your question. They, like fruit trees? they love fruit trees. Oh, they yeah, 
Oh yeah, they wait for them to drop avocados. And they, oh. they don't climb the trees. That they, they. So the most preferred prey item of Southern California coyotes are rats, rabbits, and cats. And so if you get rid of the rabbits, they'll just eat the cats and the rats. And if you get rid of the cats, they'll eat the rabbits. So they're omnivorous. They'll eat whatever is there. Um, but they do their, their most preferred mammalian prey items. So if you manage the rabbits, they will just eat something else. Yeah. And it may even make them eat more cats. I don't know. We haven't actually looked at that, but that is a good question. Any more questions? How do we control the population then of coyotes? You can't. You just can't. You have to control your own behaviors. It's, it's impossible. Now, if every city in, in every county in California made an aim at population reduction, you might have a chance. But there is just so many coyotes everywhere that they're just... Um, and they're, they can travel, it kind of depends on what's in their habit, but they'll travel. And so what we're seeing from our own collared coyotes that are in LA County is that they're using flood control structures. You can see it. I was looking at the map up there and I was wondering, like they're traveling through Fairview Park, Talbert. They're using the flood control channel. They'll use the easements, the right of ways. Um, they use even small drainage ditches that are at the back of people's homes. Um, they'll use railway lines. They use everything and they're just, they're just really able to travel. And so I know there's a lot of people that don't want coyotes in your neighborhood, but there's a lot of things we don't want in your neighborhood. And it's just almost impossible to get rid of them. Um, I think the most important thing in this city is that the city is sticking to its management plan. And it is, you know, taking out the ones that are aggressive and that are not going to cause any additional I don't know why you want to call it like problems. I mean, every coyote is kind of a problem, but that's a coyote just being a coyote. This city appears to be taking, rid, t getting, uh, taking care of the coyotes that are not acting like they're supposed to, um, which is a lot more than many other cities, to be fair. Well done. They just seem to be around more. Yeah, there's definitely, I would say it seems like there are more, um, you know, at least anecdotally, it seems like there's either, you know, they're at higher densities, they're expanding their range. Um, you know, I'm obviously not originally from Huntington Beach, in case you haven't noticed. Um, so I haven't been around that long, so I don't have a historical perspective. But um, Dave Dodge grew up with the dinosaurs, and he tells me that there's definitely more coyotes in California than there used to be, right? I mean, they're just in cities that, you know, and then, you know, social media can make them more visible as well. But I would say that people that have been in this area for a long time, um, you know, you're not scientists, but I believe you when you say that there are more coyotes here. Like, you know, there's more cars, there's more coyotes, um, and they're very well adapted to urban areas. Um, and a lot of people say that the drought pushed them down here, and it may have, but, you know, it, do it doesn't matter now. They're here to stay they're not going anywhere. I don't see any city that is successfully trying to eradicate coyotes. Um, some cities do have active trapping programs. Um, but, you know, police put criminals away. But does that mean you're going to leave your house unlocked and your, your car unlocked? Because no offense, they're not going to get all of them. And that's exactly what would happen if there was a lethal control program in the city. You'd still have to have a wonderful catio or keep your cat inside or keep your dog on a leash. It's probably on the form, the sheet, but can you just share with our residents uh, what's the prevalent time of day that they uh, like to roam and what can somebody do when confronted with a coyote that's being aggressive? Well, I'll answer the, the biology question and then I'll hand it over to these folks for the, the other question. But coyotes are not nocturnal. And so if you see a coyote during the day, it's just being a coyote you know it's the same way like I like to be tucked up in bed at nine o'clock and himself is still wide awake at one o'clock right I can't stay up that late but it's different with coyotes coyotes will be awake when their prey is awake and because they're opportunistic that can switch so you could have a coyote that could be nocturnal and a coyote that could be diurnal and um, so they can 
adapt very well. And so a lot of people say that they can see more coyotes during the day, and that could be just because there's more coyotes, or it could be because they've shifted their behavior because there's different food available. And if you think of it, when um, the captain was talking about the prey or the, the feeder, that would change the behavior of a coyote, right? So that would bring coyotes into an area. Feral cat feeding is a disaster for a number of reasons. Um, but from a coyote perspective, at least our research is showing that um, areas that have um, feral cat feeding are exactly the same areas that coyotes like to occupy. Um, and so that's not good. And, you know, if you have a feral cat feeder in your neighborhood, I'm not really sure what the city's policy is, but you, you could try and encourage them um, and tell them that it's it's not good for their, their cat's welfare. Like they're just feeding cats to the coyotes. About hazing, hazing, can you can do a variety of different things to haze a coyote away. Um, the city of Costa Mesa has come up with these fantastic cans um, and it's got a bunch of different information here about coyotes on here. Are these still available from the city? They are, but we need to make some more. We were ready for a November meeting, we're ready for April. So, you can just get any aluminum can, put some coins, put some, you know, nuts or bolts in here. Um, noise maker. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I, I walk my dogs late at night, and one of the things that I carry is um, I went online on Amazon for 20 bucks. It's a flashlight. It's got a stun feature on there. And not that I'm going to zap it with the stun, but it's just the sound because it's not a typical car horn. It's not you know, maybe a noise that they hear. It's not me yelling, ah, run. They're used to that and they become, you know, it, you know, they tune it out. They become immune to it. So I activate that little stun feature and that crackly electric sound. I mean, I literally had five of them run one night because they were like, whoa, what is that? And they took off running because it's not your typical beep beep or me yelling. So there's lots of different things out there that you can get to haze coyotes. You can carry an umbrella, you can carry a golf club, a walking stick, um, a water gun. We don't recommend uh, pepper spray or any odorant that's going to go out because you have to think of it, if it's windy and you're near an elementary school and you blast that coyote with the pepper spray, let's say, and now it blows onto the playground. Now what have you got? You've got a bunch of elementary school kids exposed to the odorant. So, I mean, naturally, if it's your life or the kids getting a little blast, you want to protect yourself, but you also have to think about your surroundings. So that's usually the stuff that we don't recommend is the sprays just because you don't know where they're going to go and you don't know if it's going to come back in your face. And now you've got a, a very upset coyote and you can't even see it because you've just blasted yourself with the spray. So you can't protect yourself. You can't protect your pet. And now you don't know what's going to happen with the coyote because he's now he's angry. Does that make sense? Sir, did you have a question yeah. on hazing? Is there any kind of deterrent that we can put around our yard, like a spray, you know, for certain rodents to, you know, keep snails away and put stuff? You know, people have said try wolf urine and ammonia and other things. And the problem is, is like Dr. Quinn said, they get used to things. And then they go, hey, there's no wolves around here. I haven't seen one. I haven't smelt one. They keep coming back. So there's really not an exact deterrent. I like to recommend the Critter Ritter. It's a motion sensor sprinkler. It's definitely kept the raccoons and opossums out of my yard. I have what Neve was calling with the, the wildlife highway behind my house. It's a flood basin, so it's quite frequent with rodents and whatnot to travel through, coyotes, raccoons. And I just picked up love, at my Amazon. It's a motion sensor uh, sprinkler. You attach it to your hose, and when something runs past it, it blasts it. And, no animal that I've ever seen likes to stand there and take a blast from a water hose. So I, I, I've had it in my yard for over a year, and I haven't seen a raccoon or an opossum or a coyote in my backyard for that matter. I've seen them in the front. Maybe I need to move it to the front, but I haven't seen anything in the back. So there's different things that you can try outside of stinking up your yard with well, other odorants. What about your well, you can, I mean, I put a fence topper on top of my fence, and that's one thing. You can't just throw up on your fence. Make sure that the city's codes are saying that you can have your fence so many feet higher than normal. Um, but I put a fence topper on. That's cut down some of the wildlife. Um, you know, and then you can also put up coyote rollers, depending on, again, your height. Um, that's not a wildlife roller. It's, 
it's just a, a rolling system that you attach to the top of your fence. And um, what happens is when the coyote or any other wildlife grabs the top of your fence to try to leap over, that roller pushes their feet back off your fence. Does that make sense? So they're going to reach up and they're going to slide off because the roller is going to keep rolling. It's not going to, they're not going to have that steady object to pull, catapult themselves over. My neighbor did it with piping and a piece of PVC over mm -hmm. And the PVC rolls on the steel and they can't get in. So our, our fish and wildlife website, our keepmewild.org website, there's a link in there that has various companies. It's not anybody that we completely recommend or say buy this coyote roller or do it yourself. But at least you could go on there and see what it is and see maybe how to make it yourself or look, it'll give you, point you in the direction to look for companies where you can get a roller. Their success rate, I can't tell you, that's not, it's not something I've studied. I don't know if Dr. Quinn has, but, um, and she's saying no, she hasn't. So, you know, anything is worth a deterrent to try to keep them out of your yard is what I try to, to keep any wildlife out of my yard. Yes, sir. So, Dr. Quinn, yes. you mentioned a few times feral cats. I think you know, Vic mentioned too. So, we consider um, through our animal control, our animal services committee, doing a, 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 a it's called a T, TNR, trap neuter and release. Cities that have that, does that affect their, any, their coyote behavior? Um, TNR is a bad idea. Um, can't, I don't have anything good to say about TNR. Um, TNR will just give your predators more things to eat. Um, their cats are an environmental disaster. They're going to kill all the wildlife in the area that you would might want there. Um, they have diseases like endemic typhus. Um, that you're going to give to your residents, your city staff, um, and also leptospirosis is going to get into the food chain. Yep, feral cats. Then the trap neuter success rate is too low generally. It doesn't account for incoming unneutered cats. Um, it's, it's not a good idea. Don't do it. I don't have anything good to say about TNR, anything. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can ask other people, but most, if you reached out to Orange County Vector Control, they'd say exactly the same thing. And, but your cat people will obviously advocate for it. Um, but it's, it's not humane. I guarantee you that cat advocates, advocates look after the cats very, very well, but they will in, end up in the inside of the belly of a coyote. And so will other people's pets as a result. Yes, sir. How about trap, neuter, and release for the coyotes? Just because the coyotes have no balls doesn't mean that they won't eat cats. Simple as. Doesn't matter, it'll, it'll do the same thing probably. Coyotes will just come in from other areas. You don't know how it's going to affect the behavior of the coyote. Neutering could just make them even, you know, move less and eat more in the one area. We just don't know but it's not, they won't stop eating cats and dogs. They just won't. Have there, have there been any attacks on humans? Yes. Not have, in Costa Mesa. Not in Costa Mesa. I, I heard there was one like down in Mission Viejo. Oh, there's like Orange County and LA have more bites it combined probably than the rest of the, uh, than the entire country potentially. So Southern California, LA, Orange, San Diego probably has more bites on humans than the, in, the entire rest of the nation combined. I don't know why. It could be population density of coyotes, it could be population density of people, it could be just people not knowing how to interact appropriately with wildlife because we're very urban. Um, but there have been bites in several of the cities in Orange County. Irvine gets a lot. They win. Um, you know, we've had ones in, do you guys remember? I could look, Anaheim recently, fairly recently, Fountain Valley. But the Fountain Valley one wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a bite, they don't think. Yeah. Well, no DNA evidence, so hard to prove it. Yeah. And so a lot of them are unprovoked. Some of them are on children. Um, the ones that are on children are pretty scary. Um, they're ambush attacks. They're usually around the head and the neck. Um, 
it's happened happened in Irvine. Yeah. So a lot of the directly or indirectly okay. yeah. along the line that has led to the, to the investigations we've done. As an example, last year in Orange County, you guys, I'm Dave Dodge. I'm just a, 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 a guest. So I'm a guest today. Use the people. So they're using a people. wildlife watch guru, and they're um, just here supporting us. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, last year in Orange County, there were four bites on humans that we inv Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, you got to get the camera. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to be on TV, you guys. Um, last year in Orange County, there were four bites on humans that we investigated. In LA County, there were five. This year, Janice and I talked about a month ago, and if I remember right, in Orange County, there's been seven, but there were- In Orange County, and I believe we're at uh, three in LA County. Okay, so eight and three. And, and if I remember right, Janice, there were some Boy Scouts, uh, two or three Boy Scouts that were bitter in one, one incident. So, you guys, but when you stop and think about it for just a minute, as bad as those bites are, we have hundreds of domestic dog bites on kids every year, you guys. Think about it for a minute. There's seven million people in LA County. There's four million people in Orange County. It's 11 million people, and we're talking about less than 10 bites. It's almost unmeasurable. Now, believe you me, those are the bites that we've investigated with a warden, all right? I'm sure there's probably been other bites that have not been reported to us because it's not a requirement in the state of California for medical facilities to notify us when there's been a bite on a human. And that's unfortunate. And maybe someday we'll get that changed, all right? So right now we're not being notified. And unless the good cities like Costa Mesa, like Newport, like Irvine, unless they call us, and get us involved. We want to be involved in a couple of reasons. One, we want to understand the bite, the situation, and everything that led to it. Number two, we want to find that animal. We want to find the offending animal. The state's policy is this. We will not do coyote animal control. State's not in a position to do that, folks. We're, we're not going to do that. What we will do is this. When there's a bite on a human, the state will find that offending animal. We'll remove it. We'll put it down. And as you know, there's no relocation of coyotes. Okay, they're euthanized. They're put down. Um, that's our policy. Now, interestingly enough, 4152 in the California Code gives you, the resident, the right to hire a trapper and actually trap. You could do that. Your homeowner association could do that if you think it's important and it's prudent. The only thing the state of California asks is please use a licensed trapper. They understand the law, they've taken our tests, and we know who they are. We've looked at their traps. We've made sure that, that, that uh, they'll, they'll do it humanely. They'll put the animal down humanely, all right? Um, and that's the only request that we have. But yeah, you have the authority. You could hire an individual, an individual homeowner resident could hire a trapper to trap on their property. There's some requirements, 150 yard rule that uh, um, does lead to some interesting discussions from time to time, meaning, let's say you want to hire a trapper. Uh, the code reads, you need to notify everybody within 150 yards of that trap that you've set a trap there. You don't need to tell them where the trap is, but you need to tell them the reason why. Huh? Or have they so, uh, that's it on Cardi's, but believe you me, folks, Coyote bites are bad, um, and every one of them that we've investigated sooner or later has led to feeding. Somebody has fed that animal either directly or indirectly. And just quickly, direct feeding is people actually putting out bags of food for these animals. You know who the biggest feeders are? The senior population. You know who the next biggest group of feeders are? The homeless. Every time the police department goes into a homeless encampment, the coyotes just scatter. A couple of years ago, I went down to Santa Ana. Uh, I was able to ride with uh, local Santa Ana PD. They cleaned out a couple of homeless encampments. I wound up going to Santa Ana that year, nine different locations in the city of Santa Ana talking about coyotes. Why? Because the coyotes just spread out looking for new meal, new, new resource, new food opportunities. They're, yeah, they're actually putting, yeah, they're putting bags of food out. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, 
in Costa Mesa, we've had several residents uh, putting it at the end of uh, like trailheads and the neighbors have been really good about calling us on them. And we've put up operations to try to identify these people. And the majority of our coyotes that we've had to euthanize that have been habituated, meaning no longer afraid of human beings, have been fed, fed or injured. Those are the two. There's no one, there's not like the angry coyote coming out in Costa Mesa that's coming out to get everybody's cat. Like Dr. Quinn said, it's normal coyote behavior, but abnormal behavior, such as not being afraid of a human being or approaching humans, such as Fairview Park, where people were feeding them by the picnic tables. So the coyotes said, hey, there's food at the picnic tables. And unfortunately, we had to euthanize two, capture and euthanize two coyotes that were in that area. And we put up signs telling people not to feed wildlife, period. So we haven't had any bites in Costa Mesa. And we're following our management plan. Dr. Quinn? No, I just knocked it on. Oh, good. Yeah, I was oh, doing that over here, too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When you say Fairview Park, is that kind of the same as Teewinkle? No. Fairview Park's over, you know where Estancia High School is? Okay. Right back of Estancia High School, that's Fairview Park. And that's Fairview Park. And then you go down, that's Fairview Park. And then if you go to the south, it eventually turns into Talbert Park, which is a county asset. But we also patrol that area with our park rangers as well. And then Teewinkle. And if you looked at our map, we've unfortunately taken two at, in that area. And then any of them that were, we've tracked back, that are habituated back to the fairgrounds, we've euthanized them as well. Sir? Do the geese and ducks yeah. provide food for the coyotes? Do they eat ducks or geese? I have never seen so much goose poop in my life as there is in the schools in Costa Mesa. Um, like, it's insane. Um, I think it feeds the rats, potentially. Um, well, I, that's a good question. We do not test for goose poop in our diets. Um, I, they don't eat that many geese because they're kind of hard to catch. Um, but I don't know. But there is an insane amount of geese. Like insane. Like I like we work in a lot of schools in the Newport Mesa School District on other stuff, and yeah, it's kind of gross. I, don't know I just got say. back from South Dakota. <laughs> and they will try to get a duck or a goose. But what the ducks and geese do is they put sentries out. And as the flock is feeding, they've got their sentries. And as soon as their sentries spy or see a coyote, they, they notify everybody to take off. do they eat off. the crap? Have you ever seen the meat? Have you ever seen no. the meat duck crap? Hmm? No? I've never seen it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Yeah. So yeah, Lauren, they'll, they'll I, try, I see this at the golf course. They're not successful. So at the golf course, if you see a coyote and there are geese, the, exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. They'll start to, you do, you know, whatever, do their calls or whatever. And I don't, you don't know what they're doing. But now I think I know what they're doing. They're just warning everybody else. Everybody eats. The sentries watch. Yeah. Then they switch off. The sentries eat, and they put new sentries out. But they're always watching you guys. Always <laughs> watching. And then if you'll notice when they sleep, many of them sleep on the water. Okay. Coyotes can't get to them. Right. For an so, island, island in the water, right? Most of our parks that have ducks have an island in the, the lake. But they do eat some birds on the golf course. Not necessarily geese, but they do eat some birds. They will get birds from time to time. They'll get birds, but not ducks and geese, usually. Very unusual. But in that particular park, there's a lot of homeless people. And people live in their cars and they just leave everything in trash. Yeah. There's a lot of rats yeah. in that area as well. So rats are my thing. Coyotes are like my side hustle. Um, and so there's a lot of rats in that area. Like a like surprising number. And not just in the fairgrounds, in other areas in that locale as well. And so we know that coyotes eat a lot of rats. And so we're working on it. <laughs> four was, there's four it, less this week there anyway, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it easier though for the coyotes to get cats rather than rats? I would think the rats yeah. would be I don't know. To be away quickly there's probably them. more rats. So there's more rats than there are cats and there's equal amounts of rats like coyotes, rats and rabbits are, are kind of equal in their prey preference. Oh. Um, but obviously there's more rabbits and more rats than there are cats. 
Yes. So, yeah. but cats are not outdoors all the time, right, and right. so you know it's just, and they're roof rats as well. Like they spend, they're very good at evading predators, but they all evolve. And they, well, they they also <coughs> live in the palm trees too. The rats. Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah. Trees. So, but they should be able to escape. I don't know. We didn't. It's kind of a new discovery that coyotes eat rats. To be honest with you, oh, we didn't okay. really know. But they do. Yeah. And we know that. Anytime yes, we find a, 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 if we if we euthanize a coyote or. If we find one that's been injured or killed by a car, we bring it to Dr. Quinn, and then she'll tell us what the contents of the stomach are, give us a little further information on what kind of, if that is has been being fed human food, like someone's been feeding it, or is it eating pet food, or is it eating cats, unfortunately, or dogs, unfortunately, or rats. I witnessed someone in a lawn chair at an undisclosed location feeding the coyotes. I mean, I've seen this a couple mornings. What do I, the guy is not someone I would want to approach. He's possibly. Call our dispatch, yeah. 714-754-5255. I know Cindy knows it. Um, no, believe it, any, with anything like someone feeding a coyote, we hate to hear the report 20, 30, 40 minutes later. We want to know when it's happening then. Just like people say, oh, I saw somebody trying car doors on my street, but I didn't want to bother the police. That bothers us. We'd rather be able to get the person doing this and take a report than just take a report about it. So if you ever see anybody feeding a coyote actively, call dispatch and they'll send you either an officer or an animal control officer that's on duty to go take care of that. And do you have animal control officers on duty at night or on the weekends? Um, on the weekends, yes, but not always at night. But we have animal control officers that are on call. But an officer can handle someone feeding a coyote as well as a park ranger. And if it's definitely like you're saying in the morning, generally, right? That's when we have, right? We have park rangers, animal control, and regular police officers on duty, and our community policing unit. So we have, there's four teams that are ready to go down there and take care of that issue. Hello, yes, ma'am. I live in um, Newport Plus, which is over by Bison and MacArthur, mm -hmm. and we haven't bombarded with sightings over the last. I'm going to say two or three months, but it keeps getting worse. And I don't think that they're doing anything about it. Well, a sighting of a coyote, especially Newport Bluffs, that's right at that edge, is right up to the back bay. You're right at the edge of the back bay right there. The back bay is a beautiful habitat for coyotes. And that's where the majority of ours from the east, on the east side of our city come in. And you're on the west, and you're on the west side of the bay, or east side of the bay, excuse me. And they're coming up the bluffs and looking in those neighborhoods. I haven't really looked at 92660, I believe that's your zip code. I haven't looked at that in a while. Um, but if you leave your card, I can look at it anecdotally and tell you. Well, it's getting really bad. I mean, almost daily, we're getting messages, text messages from the administrative office saying, another sighting. Uh, a friend of mine was walking along a walkway uh, about 7.30 last week, three coyotes. The walking ahead of them. I see coyotes every, I, I drive um, to work along Irvine, along the back bay. I see coyotes every morning walking down the footpath. Yeah. Walking our, when I, when I used to run to work, I used to see probably five coming all the way from like by Newport Harbor and then seeing them in the back bay. So they're out there, like Dr. Quinn says, it's whether their activities are it improper. Like it's gotten a lot worse. I've lived there for two years and we've never had it. The right now. You can call Newport Beach Animal Control and they'll go come out and talk to you about it. Newport, Newport Beach Animal Control? Because their they're animal control is also under the police department. And they kind of well, they'll, they'll take whatever their management plan tells them to do, just like we follow our management plan. You know what theirs is like? it's, it's, if you took out Costa Mesa from ours and put Newport Beach, it's pretty much the same plan. Island. They do, but you also have to remember, I'm just speaking about coyotes in general. We have we vilify the coyote a lot of times, but also the raccoons are out there also, yeah. and they kill cats. We found that also, in Costa Mesa at least. So will coyotes kill raccoons? Oh, oh. I don't know, that's pretty even fight right not there. Really. Yes and no, like they, they will, but they're not. <laughs> it's funny, 
you, you know what? Well, and this is anecdotal. So, like, I watch cameras all day, every day, looking at coyotes mm -hmm. in the backside. But um, they, a lot of the time, will see. Um, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's too late at night, and I haven't eaten dinner. Um, like, there's like partitioning. Right, so you may have one over the other sometimes, and like you will get the two of them sometimes at the same place, especially if there's a lot of food. But a lot of the time, they like they're both like kind of omnivorous carnivores, so they're both going after the same thing, oh, okay. and usually that's enough to kind of split them up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, or what you get is you get them at different times. So like we, for example, like we have um, a cameras at an airport in Los Angeles. And we were trying to catch two coyotes, well we caught one coyote, and we, we collared it, and we never saw any raccoons. Now the, the coyote has since left, and now there's loads of raccoons. Oh. Um, and so it's kind of like this niche separation type idea, um, cat, the words just left my brain. Maybe they follow each other around. I mean they could did. do too, but um, you know they do have, like usually if you get like predators, and they kind of are, they're kind of scavengers, predators that eat the same thing, you usually don't get them in the same place. And in Costa Mesa, we have huge uh, raccoons. Yeah. They're big. I know, I've seen them. Anna? Uh, this year, I've uh, yes. found a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, deceased teenager raccoons mm -hmm. that oh. have been killed by coyotes. I, 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 uh, I heard on Delbo, I, it happened on the street I was on. Uh, a woman was, got between a mother raccoon and their babies. That's not really germane to this. but. The woman decided to get a rabies series. Now, is uh, rabies an issue with either of these animals? Here she comes. No. Um, there's, there's essentially no land rabies in California. It's all mostly like in the bats. And so it's not something that we have to worry too much about. But if a human gets bitten by a coyote, they will have to go through the full rabies series, unless you already have the prephylactic, which how, I don't know how many people. Do you guys get it? No. I mean, do you get it? Do you have it? So, I mean, that's kind of like the, this, like your, I mean, I have it. But I've worked all over the world in places where there is rabies, but it's not something you really have to worry about too much in California. I'd be more worried about like leptospirosis, typhus, you know, salmonella, E. coli, things like that. Um, and like, obviously, I'd be more worried about, you know, West Nile and, you know, things that you can get from mosquitoes. I, I mean, you're not, and yeah, just. Don't pick up dead wildlife with your bare hands. In fact, just don't pick up wildlife. You know, just call animal control. They're properly trained individuals with long sleeve uniforms, right, Anna? Okay, that's good, I'm just checking. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Wow. If there's no uh, questions, we'll have the experts stand by just in case you want to ask them something offline. Thank you very much for attending. Go on the uh, website, please.